Hello and welcome to my channel. So I know a lot of people who subscribe to my channel don't necessarily watch the Netflix reality show Love is Blind. I can tell by my views on the topic, they're a little bit lower than my views on videos normally are. And I can also tell because on my community post apologizing for most of my videos in October being about Lo Love is Blind, it got the most interaction or the most likes that I've gotten in a while on a community post. So in general, I know I'm not, you know, really, th th that's kind of me stepping outside of my, of my, my established content, I don't know. But I will say that as a content creator, it is a great way to work smarter, not harder. And it's also a great way to like, build a community and have a community. I love having conversations and seeing other people's opinions uh, about the same content that I'm looking at. I think the only downside is that we are talking about real people and not just random cast members and random actors and actresses that have been assigned to do something that is concretely fake in nature. There is a hint of reality to this and so, there's definitely a sense of like, I think there's just, there's more respect that needs to be paid sometimes when, when looking at these situations. And there's also a sense of relating a lot more to what's going on because like I said, these are real people. This is not actors and actresses. Yes, these storylines might be doctored because it's reality TV, but this is real. And that being said, I wanna talk a little bit about the concept of being too much. In last week's episode, when Marissa and Ramsey's, and if you don't watch the show, basically these two cast members of the show that were supposed to get married, Marissa and Ramsey's, their relationship came to an end when Ramsey's basically had second thoughts, a light bulb went off, he said, I cannot marry this girl, and he broke the news to her on camera, and she lost it. She crumpled, she was crying. It reminded me of this movie, A League of Their Own. I remember, a League of Their Own, there was a specific scene. If you've never seen the movie, it is over 30 years old. So this is a spoiler alert, but like it's over 30 years old, so get over it. There's a scene in the movie where Tom Hanks has to break the news to one of his players, and the movie is about women who step up to play baseball during World War II. Their husbands are at war, their brothers are at war, so they step up. And one of his players' husband has passed, and he has to break the news. Now, a lot of these women were married to men who were fighting overseas, so whenever he would get one of these telegrams that would be informing everyone that, hey, somebody died, he would, uh, people would be on edge. They wouldn't know, like, is it gonna be me? Is it gonna be my turn? Is it gonna be my husband this time? So he gets this piece of paper and he has to take it through and he walks over to these two players. And one of them is like the star of the movie. Gina, Gina Davis, she's playing Dottie Henson. And she's very clear on that. Her husband wanting to have kids, that's where her main focus is. Baseball that she's really good at is not really, she don't really wanna, she ain't serious like that with it. And he stops in front of her and this other woman named Betty, they called her Betty Spaghetti. And I remember thinking she was so pretty when I was little, but anyway, so he, he walks over and he hands her the note, letting her know that it's her husband that's died. And the scream that she let out, to this day, I get chills on my back. To this day, I get heated. Like, I remember being a little girl and thinking, I never want to experience anything like that. If that means I never get married, if that means I never, I don't want whatever that was. Now, of course, as an adult woman who has experienced heartbreak over and over and over and over again, I've definitely had my Betty Spaghetti moments, absolutely. And when I saw Marissa, break down the way she did, in my mind I just thought, oh, Betty Spaghetti, it's bad. Like that's, that's, that's that like primal howling cry that you've lost something that is so special to you and so real to you and life is spinning in a million different directions and your sense of reality and your sense of what you held dear has all been cracked open and destroyed in front of you at the same time. And the great thing about Betty Spaghetti was that was fake. That actress got to go home to whoever was in, Marissa was living, living this out in real time. Those were her real emotions splattered all over Netflix screens, played over and over again by millions of people across the globe. And I'm gonna say this, and I said this in the comment section, and I'm gonna say this now, we as an audience should not have seen that. If you watch reality TV, especially if you watch that show, you know that one of the big complaints is 
they just drop us off, especially this season. They don't let us see the fights. They don't let us see people, you know, tear at each other. We're confused. They, we we want to know. After watching that scene, I said, oh, that's why. That's why people say, hey, I want to keep this off camera. That's why people go and talk to production and talk to each other and say, we're not doing this on camera. Because once social media, once other people get a hold of your most vulnerable moments, they are less likely to show you kindness and more likely to do what they did to Marissa, which was, first of all, do the thing that people tend to do with romantic involvement in romantic relationships and therapize her and pathologize everything she was feeling and create distance, create that logical distance between themselves and such a raw emotion. I would never do that. She needs to stand up. She needs to stand up. Who feel, I can't believe, she begged that man. She, I could not believe the level of superficiality people were showing to her in that moment. I could not believe, and, and I'm not surprised because it's it's really a school of thought that I see preached every single day at women. Despite us being the literal centers of life and despite us being the literal centers of emotion and emotional intelligence and the we're, we're the heart and the hearth of a home for a reason. We are taught or told to, or it's constantly preached at us to ignore that part of ourselves uh, push it down, focus on our minds, mind over matter. That's why I think a lot of the times male dating coaches and people with advice for women that are men are so popular and get so popular so fast because of the matter of fact and, and straight to the point way they try and talk us out of feeling our own emotions. With things like a woman's intuition are slandered, feeling like something in your gut or, or knowing. I mean, we can go back centuries ago when the way a woman felt around her menstrual time or the way a woman felt when she was sexually frustrated or the way a woman felt when she was being asked to do all these things in the home and raise 12 kids because it wasn't no birth control and no, you know, whatever. Oh, well, she's hysterical. Let's lock her up and put her in an insane asylum. Women's emotions have a history of being disregarded and in general treated as if they are subhuman. And, you know, in the olden days, they might do whatever with you and just write you off. And it was very, you know, mean. And, and we all can look at that now and say, oh, that wasn't right. But nowadays, what we do is when we see somebody cry, when they're heartbroken, when they've loved and they've lost, and we watch it play out in front of our faces, we turn our nose up at them. We criticize them and we tell them to stand up. Come on, girl, stand up. And what's what's even crazier to me is so many people that were saying that to her, but like thinking that way to her, have been in that situation themselves. And because they didn't know how to hold space for themselves, and because they didn't validate their own emotions in that time and in that space, they hate her for feeling what she felt so openly. That's my opinion. So anyway, so that was one reaction. The second reaction, and you know, I, therapists and clinicians, I love you. I love you, I do. I learned so much from certified people that share their knowledge and their instinct or whatever on social media. I think therapy TikTok is great. Sometimes it's, and, and therapy YouTube, and just I read psycho, psychology articles a lot of times when I'm doing like my videos, I'll go find different terms. I'm like, mm, I have an instinct about something, is this? Is this something that's been studied? Is this a behavior that's been studied? And I'll go look it up and it has. However, one thing I don't like is when a normal human response is labeled and treated like a problem. So for example, um, she said, you know, I have a lot of energy. I'm, a I'm very energetic. And people said, oh, well, that's probably ADHD. And that's why, and listen, Marissa herself labeled it and that's great. But people also came out of the woodworks and said, ooh, she's crying like this because she has a fear of abandonment. She is probably, that's probably a borderline personality disorder. You know, I'm really seeing here that she's neurodivergent. You know, I all of these labels, and it's like, is nobody just allowed to love and be heartbroken anymore? And let me be clear, 
I understand that I do the same thing. Any analyzations I make, any, especially when I decide to bring astrology in, you know, me going in on Tyler because he's a Libra man. But um, the difference between that and psychologically labeling someone is that astrology don't hold up in court, baby. Don't nobody give a damn. <laughs> don't, don't nobody care. If I mean, that when I put my little disclaimers in front of my videos and I say this is for entertainment purposes only, it really is. Because uh, at the end of the day, I'm using a pseudoscience. I'm using something that, yeah, sure, I've seen patterns for and I can see that it works. And to me, it makes sense. But it's not generally accepted as the truth or generally taken, nobody's going to hear, oh, well, of course I did this. I'm a Gemini moon. Let me get to the doctor and get prescribed some pills. And nobody's going to do it. Like it's, it's when you carry a little bit more weight, when you are coming from a different place that is supposed to be like a solid form of, of science, I think you just need to be careful. And I want to say this too. A lot of times it's not exactly actual therapists and clinicians. What it is, is it's everyday average Joes and Joannes who have learned a couple of words and they've decided to appropriate and to use therapy language and they're throwing it at these people. And the bottom line is that these people can see what you say. It just seems unfair to me and it seems really irresponsible. Anyway, let's go back to the video. I really lose patience with modern day, the modern day pattern of sucking all the soul out of life and making everything about labeling and itemizing and science. I think life is a combination of soul and science. That's why some of you might have heard in my last video, I said I don't like the term limerence. While I do think it has a place and it's great to be able to label behaviors that are bothering you, I know that sometimes we can want to hear from somebody so badly, we can be obsessing over it and it can become a negative thing that harms us. Okay, so I am really getting tired of these little interludes, <laughs> but here's another one because I forgot to actually clearly explain this when I was recording because I was kind of rushing. I'm really talking about how the topic of inter limerence is talked about on social media. So for example, someone will share a story and they'll be like, oh my God, I just met this guy and I can't get him off my mind. I just feel like we're thinking about each other and I'm just so excited about him. And people will be in the comment section talking about some, that's limerence. There was a woman who did a video the other day and she said, hey, sometimes you can tell if somebody's thinking about you because you might see these signs. And so I'm watching the video and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I've experienced that before. You know, she said something like, if they pop into your head, if you, if there's a song that comes up that reminds you of them, if whatever, maybe you have a dream about them. So all of these things have happened to me and then I've ended up hearing from the person in my life. And yet I've also experienced the fact that I could be really thinking about someone or whatever. And, you know, it's something that I maybe need to walk down from. I don't like the fact that people can't hold space for both realities. I think that's my issue. Immediately when you label something as limerence, immediately here come the coaches, right? Here come all the people talking about some, I'm going to teach you how to work through this. Don't be that way. Don't obsess over that. Don't think about that person. If we didn't have quote limerence, end quote, we would never have any love songs. Okay, all of the 90s, I can't sleep, baby. I can't think, baby, without you in my life. These days, someone would say, oh, that song is limerence. Oh, no, no, he shouldn't be like that. No, I'm gonna teach you in my five-step $99 course or watch my YouTube video about how not to feel this. It's like, let people feel their feelings. Humans are supposed to feel feelings. Everything does not have to be negatively diagnosed. That's my point. But to me, Everything is not always negative. Everything does not always need to be labeled negatively. Sometimes you are just a human having a human experience. And when I saw Marissa breaking down the way she did, I said, God, I wish they hadn't shown us this because now she not only has to relive the trauma of experiencing that, but now she's got to listen to the millions of different ways complete strangers process her experience, her broken heart, and her response with or without her consent. I say with her consent because sometimes she'd be reposting stuff like, yeah, okay, okay, you might have a point. And I say without her consent because there's a lot of people who came at her really negatively. And a lot of those people were other women. I think other women are the hardest on each other when it comes to sensitive emotional subjects like heartbreak, letting a man know that, hey, I love you, please don't leave me. What do we get? We get labeled as, as like pick me's, desperate, whatever else. 
and I and this this what this is all I gotta say. I have absolutely sat up there and walked out, and I've also absolutely said, uh, uh, but wait, but wait, before I go, hey, listen. And it's also been sometimes through tears. I have been all roles. I have, it's, it's taken all kinds in my life. So when I saw that scene play out, I said, oh my God, I relate to this so much. Also, this deeply hurts me. I don't like watching this. I watched it the first time so that I could respond for my video. And when I went back the second time and I was you know, grabbing footage, capturing footage to put in the video, I watched it again and this time, the first time I watched it, I was like, oh, is that but a tear? A, a, a little droplet, a little tear. The second time I watched it, it was full on Kim Kardashian, ugly cry face. I was howling as well. I was like, Ugh! along with her, my dogs were so disturbed that, oh, you <laughs> I'm sorry, she, she passed out. Um, she climbed up in my lap like, can I help you, sister? Can I help you? My bigger one, Sebastian, he was looking at me like, rrr, 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 like trying to start to bark. So I said, girl, you got to get it together because you're stressing these animals out. But it was so traumatizing and so triggering to watch it. But I also hated how people made her feel like shit because of it. And I really wish that Netflix didn't show us that. But because they did, because they did, it made me want to talk about something that Ramsey said to her. When he was breaking up with her, if you don't know the show, Ramsey says to her, I don't know if your energy will be too much for me day in and day out. And a lot of people took that and said, oh my God, I have been there before. The concept of being too much for someone and that hurts like hell. So I wanted to talk about that for a second because of course I know how that feels and so I'm gonna. I don't think that he was a bad person for telling her that. I just don't think the internet, I don't think we should have saw it, seen it. I feel badly for both of them actually post show because I don't know if you know this, but Marissa has spoken out and other Love is Blind people have spoken out and they've said, we don't know what the edit looks like before we see it. So we see it in real time with y'all. And I cannot imagine going through that experience and being like, okay, you guys don't have to cut anything. I'm sure, I'm sure they will give me a good edit and seeing it and reliving your pain and then getting social media's response at the same time. I cannot imagine. I mean, it was enough for me. It's enough for me when I tell like a story time and I have to relive the story cause I'm telling it and I'm like, Ooh, okay, got it out. And then I look at the comment section and I'm like, I should have left that in. Delete, I take that thing down, okay? <laughs> because that is, that's not, that's that's not a great experience. So I feel badly for both of them. Ramsey's is doing something that I think is really smart. Even though I do think he is an egotistical, egocentric, very selfish, um, petulant baby child of a man. I also think he's very smart from like a PR perspective because, or just from a mental health perspective, forget PR. He ain't been on social media since that episode aired. Tim, Tim, whenever his like breakup with Alex aired, he was defending himself. He was in his comment sections. Tyler, Ashley, they've been, they've been doing. Hannah, if you don't watch the show, Hannah is a very controversial cast member. Um, the clips that I have seen of her from the reunion, she may have finally lost me, y'all. I was holding out on Hannah. I have my reasons. But the reunion probably sealed it for me that we have a we have a emotional Nazi on our hands. She is not she's not here with us. She's not she's something's not clicking. It's not clicking. Uh, yeah. So these the people that I just named they are also cast members of this show and they've been consistently online defending themselves. Hannah put out a new TikTok every day with a new friend. Showing how she's, I'm likable, I'm likable. Everybody likes me, see? Tim is defending himself. Tyler's throwing up Bible verses. Tyler's now a youth pastor, okay? But Ramsey said, uh, there's no coming back from this. And I really do think that he was right to do it. Now, I hope he reached out to Marissa privately after that aired, because I mean, that's a lot. And I don't know if he, I don't know but I think it's smart for him to stay offline. And I think it was smart for him to tell her, 
your energy is not what I'm necessarily looking, what, what I want. And it made me think of the fact that even though like people have felt that way about me, but I've also felt that way about other people. I think because people hate Ramsey so much. And if you look at the comment section of my last video, somebody somebody said, I ain't watched this video yet, but I just wanna let you know, I hate Ramsey. And I was like, it's true. Sorry, I think people, people hate him so much that Marissa, so many people ran to her and they're like, uh, what does he mean by you're too much? You won't be too much, nobody's too much. And I, I do think, hypothetically that's how we want to think right this idea that somebody could love you so much and i've seen people that i'm like okay that'll be enough for me you have a good day be loved down by a partner i've seen it i've also loved people and people have been like really them whether it's a friend whether it's something romantic i can't believe you like them i can't believe i can't believe that's what you, okay girl if you like it i love it so i definitely can attest to seeing something in someone or being the right fit for somebody when maybe they're not the right fit all around. I can see that. And it's happened with me too, okay? But I also know what it's like when things are too much. And I think we need to be honest about that. Just because we hate him as like a character and as a concept, doesn't mean that what he said has no value. Marissa came out and said that, Ramsey says I'm too much because I sing in the shower and I listen to podcasts in the morning. And I just laughed at that because when I was growing, to this day, my dad cannot hear Nobody's Supposed to Be Here by Deborah Cox. So it came out when I was in high school and I was trying to discover my voice. Christina Aguilera was a big singer. We still had Whitney, we still had Celine. I grew up with Mariah Carey. So if you were a baby girl that grew up in the 90s, like singing like your life depended on it was, I mean, it's just par for the course. But I mean, I was, how old were we belting out Vision of Love, okay? Second grade, belting out them big notes. And so when I was in high school, here come Deborah Cox with nobody's supposed to be here. And I, to this day, if I say to my dad, no, 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 no. He literally, his, I mean, he just, no, shut up. I don't want to hear it. He freaks out because I used to get in the shower and wail. The same thing goes for, uh, a, there's a couple songs on his, please don't, please don't bring it up. But I was allowed to do it. They were annoyed, they were, but I was allowed to do it because I was loved, right? And I think about those situations where you you do things like you sing loudly, you dance in the car, you do whatever, and you're around some people and they're like, oh yeah, this is fun, and other people, and it's not, it ain't what they, they ain't feeling it. It also reminded me of a roommate I used to have who woke up every morning playing Journey's greatest hits, you know, Journey, Don't Stop Believing every morning and stomping around the house. And yes, it was a lot, but also that was my friend and I loved them. And so I knew, oh, she's up. It's morning time. Great. I think when you actually do really love someone and their energy does align with yours, even those things that, yes, are very dramatic and are a lot to process in a in, in, a, in an environment, you know, early in the morning, you tolerate them and you even might end up enjoying them and might missing them when they're gone. It also made me think of times when I think something is too much and I'm valid in that. So now I've never lived with a romantic partner. Um, the most I've ever done is go over to the house a lot, spend the night, maybe have a drawer, but I've never actually lived with and been you know, joined together with a romantic partner like that. But there are things in my short time that I noticed that I that I didn't like, whether it's a romantic partner, traveling partner, friend. Uh, so for example, somebody who is micromanaging the space, and that's more like friend roommate vibe. That's why I haven't had a roommate in 10 years. I don't like a micromanager. I don't like someone that needs to know all of your business. And that's 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 a friend in a house, and that's a friend in real life. Like, be cool with what I tell you, or or <laughs> um I don't like people that are uh, moody. Like your emotions are fine, but have them in your room. And when you come out to this common era, area, excuse me, you better put a smile on your face and be ready to speak and be amenable. I don't like people whose dark emotional energy kind of launches all over the house. I don't like that. I don't like people that when they come in, you wanna scramble and go to your room. I don't like that kind of thing. And then it made me think about times in my life when I've been too much. I remember when I had a job as a teacher a couple years ago and I was really excited because like Google, Gmail, 
G Suite. It had just come out and I took all of the um, teaks, the, which were the Texas standards of education, and I took them and I put them in order of what the kids needed to know for standardized testing. And then I went into the online textbook and I pulled a warm up, a class activity and an exit ticket for each uh, standard. And I put them all in folders and then I shared the folders with my teammates. And I did this, that was my summer project for myself. I just assigned it to myself. When I was a teacher, I was very much this woman right here. And if you don't know this woman, that is Leslie Nope. And if you've never watched Parks and Recreation, then you don't know she was very type A, extremely energetic, always had ideas, very excited. That same year, I was told not to come to any more staff meetings. The two people that I worked with that were also in the seventh grade team, they did not understand how to open Gmail. They didn't know, they didn't understand working that way. They didn't have the same population of kids, so they were having different uh, struggles. They were both going through things in their personal lives that I wasn't going through. And most importantly, they just weren't as excited. Like to me, I was getting ready to, I don't know, I was building a resume. For them, they were just trying to maintain a job. So I remember the department head came to me and said, you are overwhelming them. And I love it, I love what you're doing, but they don't, they're having a hard time. You can, you, you don't need to come to any more staff meetings. And I was like, oh, I see, I see I'm too much, let me back off. And it was a hard thing for me for a really long time, finding a place where I could work, where I wasn't seen as, what is she doing? You know, Why does she have so much energy? She's so weird, da da da. When I went to my last campus I worked at, it felt like it finally made sense. Like I was in a place where people were like, oh, what is she doing? Why is she so weird? What are we gonna get next? And I finally met people who could work on my level and who could match what I wanted to do. And so that was great. And I'll get back to that in a second. Another time I've been too much is whenever I'm with my dogs. Both of my animals are reactive in some way. She's just insane. And Sebastian is also insane. And uh, I got them both, I rescued them both. They were like that when I got them. I am not a K-9 certified AKC former cop, whatever trainer. I'm just a normal human being. As long as, as far as I'm concerned, teaching them like potty training them, um, you know, teaching them how to walk on a leash, teaching them various words, making sure they know not to tear up my house, teaching them to go to their beds by themselves. Like I'm like, yeah, that's more training than I ever had to do with any dog in my life. But because I have these very emotional outbursty dogs, I know I can't do things like go to a dog park. I can't do things like just take them walking on it. And it's so hard to explain that to people who have dogs that are calm that don't freak out, that are that are fine, that love other dogs. They think I'm making it up. They don't believe there's whole, like there's reactive dog training. There's, re I mean, if you have a reactive dog, you understand, but there's like, there's people that just don't get it. And it's like every person I meet that has a dog, I have to explain, no, my dog cannot go to, you know, wherever. He's gonna freak out. No, I can't go. I'm gonna have a hard time. It's gonna be stressful for me. They don't listen. But you know what? I've just, now I start, I'm, I'm very like, I put my foot down and I'm like, no. They can't, your dog can't come in here and play. We don't know your dog. I'll, I'll take my dogs out if I'm at the dog park, you know, at my apartment. Um, if somebody invites me out and they're like, hey, come to this crowded dog park bar thing where, you know, nope, cannot bring my animals there. I need to test my animals with the animal first and they, my animals only play. There's a whole, there's a whole bunch. There's a whole bunch you have to do when you're, when you're bringing more than people bargain for. I also wanna talk about being too much emotionally in romantic relationships. I've never been in a situation where what I am carrying with me, my heart, my soul, the feelings that I wanna to give to someone, the, the journey that I wanna take, it's never been mutual, it's never been reciprocated. And so often what will happen is when I reveal my heart, the nature of it and who I, who I am, even if I state it from the beginning, uh, I, I tend to be, that tends to be ignored and people tend to be like, oh, well, that's too much. So uh, maybe take it slow. And it's very frustrating for me because I see people who are built like me in loving relationships. I see them meet and yet I'm I'm tussling, you know, with on, on this different. So I, I've, you know, I haven't really found a solution to that, but it is definitely something that I know I'm like, oh, this is gonna cause a problem because they're coming at me on this level, but I'm coming on this level. I'm too much for this person. Being too much, that idea of, 
whatever you're carrying with you overwhelming the other person, the other environment. It's something that I am very aware of. It is something that made me not want to date at all in my 20s because I knew I don't just want to date. I want to start having babies. I wanted a whole like starting five basketball team. So I I can't play these silly games that folks be playing. Like I got to get, I don't even know what I'm gonna do, but I felt like I was too much then. In my 30s, I was told I was too much, but you know, I've, I've run into this so many times. And so whenever she was crying and she was like, I was 100% myself and I was still not enough. I thought, oh, I've been there so many times. And also how ironic, right? You're so much that you're not enough for this. Whatever this person was looking for, you're so much that you're not enough. Ugh, very ironic, very heartbreaking all around. I could really relate to it. And it made me think about how I've coped in these situations since it's happened to me quite a few times. Um, so first of all, when something is too much for me, I will just distance myself um, or I will try and see if maybe the person can adapt or we can adapt or I can the, the situation can be adapted to in any way. And if it can't, I will leave. Um, there's a song that I love by this singer songwriter. Her name was Rachel or is Rachel Yamagata and it's called Quiet. And it has these lyrics that say, take care, I've been hurt before too much time spent on closing doors. And it's something that stuck with me my whole life because of a lack of energetic alignment, which is what I really think being too much is. You show up and the other people around you are not meeting you where you're at. That's happened to me a lot, a lot in life. And so I now prepare myself. I'm like, don't take it personal. Don't overstay your welcome. Don't let somebody overstay their welcome. If you don't feel that alignment, we gotta go. If it feels too much, so much that it's not enough. It's not enough to help you stay. Let's let's go. So I wanna say I don't have a problem doing that uh, most of the time. There are always exceptions. Also, I like to focus on the times when I found places where I belonged or people that I belonged with. Like I said, when I was working at that school, you know, oh, please don't come to the meetings. You're overwhelming everybody. We uh, Put your binders away. But literally a year later, I was at a school and they were like, where did you come from? How do you know all this? You've already started, wait, you don't know, you don't need, you don't need this program explained to you? You figured this out? Hmm, huh. well, all right, you know? And so it feels, so it feels like stepping into like a shoe that fits really well or like a glove, like it just feels good. When you are energetically aligned, when you're in the right space, when you are not too much, but you're just enough, it feels so, so good. And so anytime I'm in a situation where I know that's not the case, I don't gaslight myself. I'm not like, oh, Stephanie, you're just making it up. No, I know what it feels like to be in the right spot for my energy to be aligned. I know what it is. This is not it. And I move on. And the same thing goes with people. Like when I first started college, I was I was confusing and bewildering and whatever to the group of people that I was around at the time. My first two years were very isolating and lonely and then I transferred to another school. And from the first day, first month, it was like energetically aligned. I am no longer too much. I'm no longer overwhelming. It makes sense here. And once again, that smooth feeling, that like, it, it just it just fits and I always keep that in mind anytime I'm around people places something's not right it's not you know it exists focus on that feeling and that normally gives me the strength I need to walk away from what's not working and as far as romantic is concerned like I said before I've never had a situation in my life where I've met someone and I've been enough because I'm exactly what they're looking for as far as what I what I feel what I want what I'm dream whatever and I've had a lot of people over the years tell me, especially in my 30s, well, you can't find it because you just want too much. You're just looking for too much. So what's helped me is seeing that there are literally people out there like me with the same heart, with the same desires. And instead of being too much, they, they were given exactly what they were looking for and it works. I don't feel ashamed anymore when someone is like, oh, well, you just feel this too deeply. You just wanted this too deeply. You, Because I have seen that it is possible and it actually works. I'm <laughs> something that's so liberating for me to say at 40 years old is I'm not a mistake. I wasn't made incorrectly. There's nothing wrong with me. I just haven't found the right environment to 
be myself in all of my of my glory. There's nothing wrong. Whenever Marissa was like, well, I do have ADHD. And it, girl, please, do you know how many ADHD, busybody, podcast listening, um, singing in the shower women are out there right now being loved down? It's not you. And I think Ramsey's even said that in a moment. He says, it's not you, it's really me. Yeah, it's you. Her energy doesn't match what you want. And that's, it's okay. It's okay because there are environments out there where you do met. I don't know if you're gonna find it. I never, I never did. I hope you do. But just because this, this didn't work, it doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It doesn't mean you have 75 different psychological disorders as defined by the DSM-5. It doesn't mean you're a embarrassment to womankind. It just means you weren't energetically aligned in this moment. It's never easy to hear that you're too much. It's never easy, especially after you've invested so much emotionally and you really believe that this could be something and you see the potential. Uh, I don't know if y'all know, but it came out that Marissa asked that man two times, three times over the course of, she was still trying to make it work in March of 2024. That show uh, wrapped or, I don't know when that show wrapped, but uh, no, he left to be on the show in October I think they say they left to be on the show in September of 2023 or October 2023. And the show goes on for about 42 days. So it's they've been married, engaged, broken up, whatever, for about a year. So she's still she was still trying to talk to this man in March. And he said, no, I think I think he I think he said, absolutely not. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's that's never easy. It's never easy to to go through those things. It's never easy to go through them publicly. But I hope for Marissa's sake, because she's gotten kind of sacrificed in this way, um, I hope that she very is very publicly is loved. Because yes, I can sit up here and tell y'all, you know, oh well, I, I know somebody like me who who's loved it, but but you don't see you don't see it in my life, right? I think it it's such a strong message when you do see somebody go through something like she did, and then you also see them loved just as loudly as they were disrespected. And that's what I hope for her because now her pain, her Betty Spaghetti moment, it's a part of the pop culture lexicon. She is now history, baby, that's history. And I hope for the sake of the collective, she gets a happy ending. So anyway, those are my thoughts about that. I wanted to share that with you all before the reunion aired and now I have. And um, I think that's gonna be my last video for October. So thank you for listening to me yap about Love is Blind. I did not expect to get swallowed up by the show the way I did, but I did. Um, and that is all for this video. As always, thank you for watching.